Hi guys, this is Samadhi Sharma and welcome to my YouTube channel Caffeine to Code. In this video we will be focusing on some C programming and we will write a basic C shell from scratch. It won't cover all the aspects of our shell but it would get you know enough so that you can work on and explore some more features and uh, you will have a basic idea of the concepts behind how a shell functions. So let's get started. Now coding a shell may seem a Herculean task at first but if we divide the problem into smaller segments and look at those problems individually and tackle those problems one at a time rather than you know planning the big picture then we I'm sure that there would be no difficulty in writing a shell and writing a shell would seem an, another simple programming task. So what I have done here is basically I have created a uh, basically I have created a file named called myshell.c and in this file I am using the atom text editor in order to code uh, the shell. So uh, let's begin coding the shell. Grab your coffee and get started. So first and foremost we will insert the main function. If you are familiar with the syntax of C programming language then you will have absolutely no problem going over through this video lecture. But if you are somewhat uncomfortable with the C or CPP type of syntax, then you may want to revise the concepts and come later. First, I will change this constant to a pointer so that these reference tasks can be carried out easily. Now, to begin writing a shelf, first we have to carefully understand what actually a shell does. So basically, there are three steps which a shell executes. The shell works in three steps. What it does is, as soon as it gets started, the first thing which it does is to load the configuration files. Configuration files are those files. Configuration files are those files which are you know settings which are set by the user uh, the shell starts first as soon as you turn turn the system, program will look for configuration files if there are any then it will load these configuration settings and then continue with the next next task now the next task is to run an repl loop now REPL stands for read evaluate print loop. Now what is what is the basic functionality of a shell? It first you first enter a command, it reads the command, it then executes the command and prints the output. So basically the next thing which a shell performs is running an REPL loop. And the final thing which a shell does is to perform any shutdown cleanup. That is to release some memory resources or any other resources, network resources, etc. which the shell was consuming so that there are no memory leaks after your shell gets turned off. So the next step is perform any shutdown cleanup. Okay. Now, the first and the third step are somewhat advanced and are not under the scope of this video series. So we will focus only on the loop part, how to run and execute a command. However, if you are interested in, you know, implementing those features, let me know in the comment section below and I will make another video explaining the configuration and shutdown cleanup. But for the present moment, let's focus on the loop part. So basically it runs a loop which continuously reads the uh, instructions given by the user, executes them and prints the output. So basically, the only thing which we have to write is what a loop does. So basically, you initialize the configuration file, initialize your cell. shell. A typical shell would read and execute its configuration files. These change aspects of the aspects. These changes are the aspects of the shell's behavior. Next, the shell reads commands from standard in and executes them, which will be covered in this loop function. 
and then after its commands are executed the shell executes any shutdown commands frees up any memory and terminates which would be covered in this shutdown cleanup so now what focus on this video series is we are going to focus on this loop part now let us code this loop part i will make a separate function for this loop and keep in mind that i am dividing the problem into smaller and smaller parts we are following the divide and conquer approach so we will break the problem at hand into as many smaller parts as possible and then tackle those parts to make the big picture look simpler so now what happens in the loop argument loop function is that we'll take it out so let me code this loop function up for you void loop the return type would be void because we don't require any value from the loop and we are not passing any arguments into the loop so it is just a function with no return type with a null return type you may call it and no arguments now we would require some temporary variables in order to store the commands entered by the user and so we will create some temporary pointers here i will explain the use of these pointers as we go along with the code as we go along with the code so this these are the three temporary variables which would be required now the first of these variables is uh is the status so you must first understand that since this is a loop we'll have to apply some loop statements so i am using the do while loop statement here now what happens is what this loop does is there are three steps in which the loop functions we can divide the loop further into three more simpler steps the first step is that the loop would read the commands entered by the user by the user after reading the commands it will parse the commands and into it will pass the commands so that uh computer can understand which part is the command and which are the arguments understand the command and then it will execute the commands so basically within this loop we have to perform these three things so now let's see how this will fit together now what i have defined here int status is a variable which will store the value of the status whenever a command is executed for instance you are executing some command and if for instance you are executing a print command you are sending an output to your printer and you want the printer to print it on a piece of paper but the computer realizes that uh uh the printer is not present there then the computer would have to send that message to the programmer or to the user and how would computer do that it will generate some error code or in other words it will generate some status code that whether the pro the, the command was successfully executed or not or there was some error or there was an exception thrown so that information will be stored in the status so this status will store the uh, fate of the command which we are going to execute and if the status is non zero then we will continue the loop and if the status somehow due to an exception or somehow gets the value zero then we will exit this loop now these are the three functionalities which we are to perform within this loop so let's perform them now the first and foremost thing is that you must have uh 
noticed that whenever you start a batch, for instance, let let me show you an example. There are some already uh, pre-written uh, text on your terminal. Uh, for instance, see my terminal here. It is written samagre at samagre hp pavilion notebook dollar. So this thing too has to be coded. So at the beginning of the loop, we have to put this prompt uh, to the user. Okay, so I would write some fancy statement which looks like some you know dangerous hacker is running his own coded shell and all. Uh, okay, so I will give it a name. Let me think. Okay, it's a nice name. Overwatch. Actually, I'm a great fellow, of, a great fan of Felicity Smoke. Uh, and actually, I love her. So, yeah, I'm a great fan of Green Arrow too. So, I love the word Overwatch. And I will code it here. Overwatch at root. I could have gone with Mr. Elliot too. Elliot Alderson. Mr. Robot. So, but no, Overwatch is hotter. So, yeah. Uh, so let's continue and then the traditional greater than sign. Now what we will do is after printing this, oh I forgot the new line argument. Uh, okay, there is no need of a new line. Ah, so there is no need of a new line because you know you type the commands following this argument okay so now let's begin so, so the first thing which we have to do is to read the command sent by the user so let's assume that there is a function called read and this function this function will return us the command which the user recently entered so I'm storing this in this temporary variable which I have created here now after that what I have to do is I have to parse the command so that the computer can understand the commands and attributes separately so I will store those as arguments arguments is uh, is an array of strings you can call it because you know a pointer of character pointers refers to arrays and we can treat arguments as an array of strings okay so arguments here is an array of strings and in this array of strings okay let me write it here for clear understanding arguments is an array of strings okay so what I would store in arguments is the parsed values of the commands entered by the user for an instance if a user write echo samagr is good then I have to tell the computer that in this command is echo and samagr is good is the argument okay so this is termed as parsing so this I will store echo in a separate slot in the array of strings that is arguments and I will store samagra is good in the separate separate uh, index so uh, now the let us assume that there is a function which does this thing named pass we will obviously code these functions but in a later episode okay so arguments will be passed but now arguments will be passed on the basis of the line entered by the user so we will have to pass this line into our parse function now what we have to do is follow this third command which is execute command now to execute the command we will have Let's assume we have an execute function. We will code these function later. So we are just breaking down the problem so that we can understand how our shell works. Now this execute command will require a set of arguments. So we will have to pass this arguments array which we got here into this execute command. 
execute function to be more precise and this execute function should return a status which would convey the message of its success that is whether the the, the command executed was successfully completed or it threw an exception or there was something else so this would return as a status and the status would be used here in this while argument to ensure that the loop continues to function or else the loop will exit okay now you must remember that this is C language it is not that high level language so we must free all it is a good practice in fact to free all the memory which we allocated during our program so I will write some freeing the memory code here remember that in high level languages such as Java and Python this function is automatically carried on by the garbage collector but since we are coding in C we will have to take care of each and everything so we will free the memory allocated to the line pointer and free the memory allocated to the arguments pointer okay and then after if the status is not zero then this loop will continue to function okay now we have broken down our main function into three parts loading the configuration file running the loop and performing any shutdown clean up then we are looking into only one as uh, uh, aspect of the shell that is the loop part and we have further divided the loop into three parts reading the command parsing the command and executing the command in the next episode we will focus on these three functions which are read pass and execute and we will implement them in our shell and we will create a working copy of our shell so guys that's all for this video in the next video we will explore all the three other functions that is reading passing and execution besides this we will also add support for some other programs to run in our shell such as uh, git cow say c matrix etc and we'll also add some custom built-ins into our shell so stay tuned i will be uploading the second video very soon uh, in the meantime, do like, share and comment and subscribe to my channel. And if you want anything else from me, then do comment in the comment section below. So, goodbye and keep coding.